Let's get over yes. to uh, Dave right now. What yes. time is that second high tide? Of, what? It's anywhere between 1 and 3 this afternoon. Okay, good. And it depends on where you are up and down the coast. And, right. and Tony's going to have those tides coming up in just a second, so I'm glad you mentioned that. Let me take you to Cedar Key, okay. which is a place that is going to be extremely extremely hit hard by this particular storm. Look at the water that is already up into Cedar Key. And I, I, I apologize for not knowing what business or restaurant that is, but that is Cedar Key. Now look at the water that is over the road. This is an area, oh, that's Hudson Beach? That's Hudson Beach? Oh my goodness, I don't know why I said Cedar Key. My apologies for that, but yeah, that's in our area then, wow. Look at the water that is coming on shore. And so many people have said to me, you know, how can a storm making landfall on the Big Bend create that? Yeah, it is the Hudson Beach camera. Now that's a tiki hut right there. But look, look at what it's doing this morning. And the problem is with this southwest wind, it's not going to be able to drain out. And the more rain we get, the rain can't drain out. So it just kind of gets stuck until we can shift our winds. And let me ask you a question about when you say the water can't drain out, will it not drain out before that second wave of high tide comes in? It's going to be hard because the low tide is not going to be where the normal low tide is. Right. Because of those winds pushing it back in. So it may drop a little bit. But well, what you're saying mostly is water is just going to keep coming water, in yeah, until later. You're going to have along the coast, you've got that salt water intrusion you see there at Hudson. And then, of course, you have the fresh water on top of it. And right. it's, it's going to be hard to drain all of that out until we can shift the winds. And it just allows everything to push back out. Th think, I mean, we're just kind of taking everything and shoving it inland. And then it's going to have to eventually come back out. But that's, that probably won't be today. It might not be until tomorrow when we kind of change things up. Here's wow. another camera for you. So... And then we're going to do some weather now. So let's jump into this particular, are we not? Yeah. Uh, USF Marine Science Camera. There's another one. That's that washing machine effect we were talking about. It's just kind of sloshing around Tampa Bay. And that's right up against uh, close to where the pier is. Another shot. This is, uh, you were talking about uh, Russell Bayshore Boulevard. There is a picture of Bayshore Boulevard now. And water just up and down that is close to that is going toward downtown Tampa from Gandhi so you can see that particular part is underwater we're not done with the rain and we Big rain bands are producing some very gusty winds as well in Citrus County from Inverness all the way down into the Brooksville area or just west of Brooksville. You know, you're going to get these 30, 40, 50 mile per hour wind gusts embedded in some of these heavier rains. And then it just stops and it quiets down. And then you get another rain band. And here comes that wind again for about 10 minutes or so. That is what tropical systems do. If you're not in the actual core of the storm, thank goodness we're not, you're going to get waves of rain. It won't be a consistent or persistent rain. It would be in waves. By the way, that tornado warning is done. Avon Park, Sebring, much better, but you do have some heavy rain coming at you. Now, how about the beaches from Clearwater down to Indian Rocks? Look at that heavier rain sitting just offshore as that is going to pinwheel in. I want to show you something else. Okay, um, this storm is about to make landfall, and I want you to see what happened to the center of the storm before it did. You see that pin, that pinhole eye, watch, there's your eye, and all of a sudden it becomes this large. Here's what happened. It's what we call an eye wall replacement cycle, and at the very end, just before it's making landfall, that eye and that pressure in that eye got so great that it literally collapses upon itself and it forms a larger center. This is very typical with major hurricanes but it's also a weakening process. Here's the problem. It doesn't weaken the storm surge. It just weakens the wind speeds. So you may notice once this makes landfall, which really imminent could be any time now near Steenhatchee or somewhere in that particular area, maybe the winds aren't as high. However, the storm surge doesn't go off of eye wall replacement cycles. That storm surge is barreling ahead just as it's expected to do in that 10 to 16 foot range up in that area from Steenhatchee, say, over to Cedar Key. So the bottom line for us, and Tony's going to talk about this, these showers, these pesky waves of rain are going to continue as that water continues to pull in as well, Tony. Yeah, and it's one of those things that uh, we've got to watch closely. When you talk about that eye wall replacement cycle, it's something that uh, is 
I guess you could say well timed because usually if this had more time, this could still restrengthen before it makes landfall, but it looks like it's running out of time uh, right now. So 130 mile an hour storm cat four north northeast at about 17 miles per hour. So this is the latest uh, as of the latest advisory. It will weaken once it moves over land, but that doesn't mean the impacts will end for us as we really start to see those winds turn on shore. And that's when we're still going to have to watch the impacts of the storm through the day today. It's really going to happen if it hasn't already when the winds turn on shore. And we're still waiting for that areas to the north. So you see those winds mainly out of the south, but we're really starting to see, especially along the coast here, Manatee, Sarasota County, especially just about every beach up and down the coast is reporting high water right now. So we got to be mindful of this and it's going to continue through the day today. So while you'll probably want to go outside and spend some time outside and maybe kind of put back your patio furniture out there, it may not be a good idea may not be a good idea to take out those sandbags because we're still going to be in a situation where the water may still be coming in as those winds turn on shore and we line that up with high tide early this afternoon. These are the wind gusts early this afternoon. They could still be gusting 40 to 50 miles per hour with sustained winds. That's going to be a problem. It's really not until about Thursday that we finally start to get the winds to calm down. So again, high water spots will continue to be the issue as the storm pulls away to the north. We'll still be in and around some periods of heavy showers. This is a massive storm. So we'll continue to see on the tail end of this moisture stream on in. So could we see an additional one to three inches of rain between now and Thursday? So we're not done with the wet weather yet. I know a lot of areas are going to be saturated quickly, especially along the coast. And that's why water, we've got to mind it in terms of one of our threats. We're all under a flood watch. Remember, water is the deadliest aspect of any tropical system, whether it's coastal flooding related to storm surge or inland freshwater flooding that could be a problem around rivers and, and creeks and streams and things like that. Right now, I can tell you we're under a a flood uh, warning in Hillsborough County, and this is why. I know it's a little bit tough to see, but I want to point this out because this is an area that we really have to keep an eye on. It's the Alla Fire at Riverview near US 301, and you see it spiking there in terms of um, the height. And right now, it's basically at about the level it was during Hurricane Ada. If you remember, we saw this rise up as well. The historic peak so far is 6.2 feet. Okay, well, you can see the projection there is for this to climb as high as 6.5 feet. So this is going to be likely a historic flooding event for this river. So we'll have to watch it closely. And it's not just this one. Um, it, it may be other rivers as well that we have to watch. Um, and it looks like, Dave, that we've got another tornado warning we got yeah, to get Yeah, we to. sure do. Uh, let's. Uh let me go back to our Sky Tower radar because we do have another tornado warning. This one literally just popped up, uh, you know, a couple of seconds ago. Yeah, I heard it and, and it's really in the same spot as this whole line has been before. You're talking about really extreme eastern Hardy County into Highlands County. And you can tell just north same, of Cruzville, it's the same the area. Same it just area. keeps trying to spin up and spin up and spin up. I'll show you a different view. Of course, this is what we call our velocity mode. If you've been with us for any time. The green are the winds inside this storm heading toward the radar and the red moving away from the radar. And Tony, this is kind of where you see this green intermingling with the mm -hmm. red showing that rotation. And know? it's almost like it's it's trying to tighten and then it loosens and it tries yeah. to tighten again. And, uh, and we're just kind of in this pattern where, man, if you live in this area, it's just... Just yeah. wait it out. So yeah. it looks like we're not even close to being done in terms of uh, those rain bands continuing to impact that area. Mm -hmm. Got arrival times on your screen so you get, a, you get an idea of when this could be moving in. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now, uh, again, looks like same area as Avon Park. 12 minutes, so not that far for yeah. those of you who live out there. Um, uh, it looks like it'll be crossing 64 here pretty soon. Frost proof if it holds together the next 23 minutes. Alpine about 16, Pittsburgh 17. And most people, you have to understand something. These, and especially tropical tornadoes, 
They're typically These weaker, but they're yeah. also typically rain wrapped. Um, yeah. You can see where that rain is. This is not something where I want you to walk outside and you can see stuff. If there is rotation within that, you're not going to be able to see it. So if you're in the path of this, it literally just stay inside and let this run by you, Tony. It's not going to be that long before that whole just band just moves yeah, by. I'm Island's watching County. if we can widen out just to see. I mean, how long? Okay. So, so it doesn't look like you're going to be out of the rain band anytime soon. Uh, as you see that tail end of it, it just yeah. extends south yeah. into like Charlotte County. Uh, and not saying this is, you're going to be, you know, in a tornado warning yeah. this long, exactly but any saying. one of these yeah. bands any one of these storms that move through could briefly spin up a tornado. And it's not just for folks in Highlands and Polk. It's really any any of these rain bands yeah. that we see up across right now moving into Citrus and Hernando and Pasco County, too. Heavy rain is going to be approaching uh, uh, Spring Hill and Dade City and, you know, Tampa right now. Uh, but but our focus is uh, is on on a tornado warning because we understand that's when we could see dangerous and and perhaps violent uh, winds with these. They're, they're, they're multifaceted storm systems. You you got a hurricane which is impacting Valdosta, Georgia, at the same time it's impacting Cape Coral. And wow. you just think it's about like 300 that. And what, it's, 20 it's miles 340, 300, whatever it is. I mean, that is a big, big stretch of weather. And that's just counting what's on land, not the water with all those waves coming on shore as well. Let's head back in. Let's check on it. We've got a new scan. Let's just kind of see how this is holding mm. it together. Maybe breaking up a little bit. And that's mm. okay. We're just, I really want to keep an eye on this because we're getting into a more populated yeah, area of like Avon, Avon Park. Park and Sebring. You know, this is Highway 27, a very, typically a very, very busy road at this time of the day. I'm not really sure right now, given the fact of, you know, being in this hurricane situation, but we're just to the west of Sebring. We're getting this rotation inside here. And if we zoom in, uh, just, just some of the roads that are impacted here. Here's South Main Street, which is really kind of Highway 27. It's a different name for it, Sebring Shores. Um, it's just this, just this little spin in the atmosphere and when it happens you're going to get the uh, a warning the weather service the computer is going to issue that warning whether or not this is on the ground this is why we tell you avon park down through sebring alpine pittsburgh nielsen as you're getting up into southeastern polk county yeah. we just want you to take cover and just hang inside until this passes yeah it does not look all that impressive no, it by, by our scan um you know highlands hammock state park you live around that area but really, we're concerned if it holds together and pushes into places like Avon Park, that's where, yeah. you know, things could get a little rougher. Not in our area, but uh, up around Ocala, it looks like there's yeah. a tornado warning for the Bellevue area into Ocala. So this is what's going to happen for us rest of the morning. These little spin-up tornadoes, these little heavy rain bands, and that water pushing up against our coast as well. So while the, obviously the, the main concern is up in the Big Bend area, we still have some problems, folks, that we're going to have to deal with ourselves coming up uh, over the next few hours as well. Okay?